All right guys, welcome back to the Average Reloader. Today, we're gonna to be working on this combination. We got some non-fire formed six millimeter mongoose grass, <clears throat> burger, 68 grain match bullets, and some ramshot tack. <coughs> so, <clears throat> the way we're gonna do this, we are going to check our overall length we're going to check how much case capacity or I should say case fill that we have for the uh, depth of the bullet in the case so we get an idea of how much powder we can fit in there um, the only reason why we're doing that is because there is no load data for the 6x45 with ramshot tack so we're gonna go off the 223 data um, as far as I know, I've never had an issue doing this because the 223 case capacity is fairly close to what the mongoose is. So you can usually interchange the powders that work in 223 on the mongoose too. So it just might take a little bit more powder to make, to get the pressures higher. So, uh, that's what we're going to work on. So we're going to go over to the gun and we're going to check out what our overall length is going to be. All right, so I have two different methods that I like to use. Not that I always use them, but I have two different ways of getting a good overall length measurement with a bullet. One is obviously a modified case that screws on to your overall length gauge from Hornady. The other is just a split neck this is a fire formed case just like this one is and the you just set your tension by pushing the tabs in on the bullet and that's usually good enough to where when you close the uh, bolt and you chamber the uh, the case with the bullet in there it'll seat the bullet in there a little bit further and with good neck tension from your tabs being pressed in It'll hold it where it's at and you can eject it out. We're going to go ahead and show both methods here and uh, write down our results. All right, so got us a bullet here. I'm going to open the chamber up. We can use the modified case method first. Make sure you get it seated in there somewhat straight. And then you're gonna pull that out and slide it in. Make sure you get it in there nice and firm. You're going to push your wire in. Tighten her up. You're going to pull it out. It stayed in there that time. Doesn't always stay in there. Dial calipers. We have 2.325. Let's go ahead and check it again. Two point three two six, so close enough. Let's go ahead and check it with the other method. Um, you can tell how much tension you got on there by how far the bullet seats down in there. Just push on the tabs a little bit, a little tweak here and there. Okay. 
to push that one in too far. All right, now what we're gonna do here, we're going to try to get it in there without dropping it. There you go, close it, open it, there it is. Bolt back up. There you go. I mean, it's it's all within right there. I'm good with a couple thousands difference. You know, it's not gonna be the end of the world. You know, unless you're unless you're wanting to jam, uh, which I'm not. I usually go eight to ten thousandths off just to be safe because you're not quite a hundred percent where the lands are at so um if your rule of thumb is if the bullet sticks in the chamber it's jammed into the lands if your bullet comes back out you are touching the lands so just from what i've gathered from my experience so all right with that we're gonna go back over to the bench and we are going to see how much powder with where we're going to seat this bullet at. And we're going to see how much usable case capacity we have in there with where the bullet's going to be seated at. Knowing that our overall length is actually longer than mag length, <clears throat> I've already planned on seating these at 2.29 because I've already done all this. So 2.29 is where we're going to seat them at. We will seat them in uh, i'll put it i'll put it in either case and just show that length will hold the bullet up next to it to see where it's going to land at on the case body and that's what we'll use our reference as as we fill up a case with powder to know how much powder we can get in there before we have a compressed load let's go back over to the bench all right so now what we're going to do here is we're going to get this bullet seated exactly where we want it at for the load length said I wanted to seat them at 2.29 so that's where we're gonna get it sitting right there that's where it's gonna be landing at so Let's get another bullet and we'll sit it right next to it to compare. It looks like we're going to be falling right there in the case neck, right at the end of the case neck where the shoulder junction's at. So now we're going to look, make sure these are the close enough to the same. We'll be able to put powder up to right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start filling this non-fire form case up with powder to see how much we get in there. Obviously we can't use this one. Well, not only because it's got a big hole in the bottom of it, but we can't use a fire form case because in my last video, we have two and a half grains of difference between the two, between fire form and non-fire form. So, as far as case dimensions go, the next shoulder junction is going to pretty much be in the same spot. So we're okay with loading to that point in either case. But where you gain most of your capacity is the fact that um, you lose the, the case taper from the 223. 223 has got case taper. The mongoose has little if not none. So... That's what we're gonna do. Open this up. Got my powder scoop right here. Let's start out with 27 grains. See where that gets us. Excuse 
excuse me. All right, we're there. 2702, I consider that close enough. We can even, yep. So we got a spit primer in here, just pressed it in there just so we had uh, something to fill up that. Uh, that's the wrong funnel, grab the right funnel. Let's pour this in here and see where we end up. So right off the bat, without vibrating it, we are right there at the next shoulder junction. If I, if I just tap it a little bit, you can start to see that little opening right there where the shoulder, where the shoulder's at. So this would be a compressed load. Now, being a ball powder, if we settle this a little bit, look how much room's in there now. We're actually below the next shoulder junction, so this would no longer be a compressed load. Which is fine. <clears throat> so if we can fit 27 in there and vibrate it, we might be able to get 27 and a half. So what we need to do now is we need to go over to some 223 data and we need to figure out where a 223 sits at with a 68 grain or 70 grain bullet because it's close enough and this powder. So we're gonna open up the Western Powders Manual here, and I'm gonna show you guys how I do this. Um, you know, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna use something similar case capacity. Well, the parent case is 223. Case dimensions are almost the same at this point because it's not fire formed, and we're just wanting to do a fire forming load right now. And uh, we're gonna look for a 65, 68, or 70 grain bullet. And we're gonna find out what the powder charge is maximum. Because if you remember, our case capacity is a little bit more, even though it's not fire formed because it's been for die formed, it does have a little bit more than what the 223 does. So let's see what that will be all right so we got the manual pulled up here there's two things i want to note our 223 data 68 grain has a max of 24.4 grains with ramshot tack um, that is at 55,000 psi this round is designed to handle more than that I'd have to look at Bruce's specs, but I know it's more than 55,000. It's probably right around 60. Um, another thing is, is their overall length is listed at 2.250. We are longer than that, which is going to drop um, pressure. When you get a longer load length, you get room in there for the powder, it will actually have <clears throat> a drop in pressure. So as you come up to a compressed load, it'll spike. Well, if you go to the 556 data with a 68 grain, they're showing 26 grains max, and that's compressed. Well, that's almost true for us, but we're a little bit longer. So that's what's gonna help us out here. Since we're doing a 10 shot group, um, you know, just my regular 10 shot load development method, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from 26 up to 27. Or maybe we'll go from 26 and a half to 27 and a half. And we'll just be watching for pressure. I don't think we'll have any problems. Um, tack is a pretty, 
not slow burning powder, but it's not fast neither. It's it's an intermediate burning powder and it's actually not going to have a I wouldn't say full burn. It might have a full burn in my barrel because it's a 22 inch barrel. Um, but it's not going to be the best neither. I just have this powder sitting around. I haven't used it since I ran a 24 inch 223 bull barrel and a 70 grain bullet. Um, and that combination was not very good. So I just am really looking to use something to fire form this brass and I got two things that I don't use on anything else so that's that's the reason for all this and that's the reason why we're doing it so uh we're gonna load anywhere from 26 to 26 and a half at the low end 27 27 and a half on the high end and with doing that we're gonna watch for pressure we're gonna see where this lands us um velocity wise hopefully it should be right up around 3,000 feet per second that's what the 223 data is saying 3,300 and we'll see if we can get this thing to shoot some good groups and hopefully be a good fire forming load so let's get to loading alright guys we're going to go ahead and get these 68 grain burger matches loaded up um, I'm probably not going to show a whole lot of the reloading process uh, you know show them shown it several times I'll put in a little blips here and there but just gonna throw some powder here and get these charges weighed up we're going from 26 and a half to 27 and a half point two grain increments and we're gonna shoot two cases per charge weight get a little bit more accurate uh, what I say uh, accurate data point for the charge weight that's in the case so alright This thing didn't group too bad. I'll throw a picture up uh, with the uh, with a ballistic app to uh, show the group size, but uh, for the most part, it grouped fairly decent. Uh, had a few on the high side, few on the low side, but most of them were were pretty uh, clumped together, which is good when you're you know doing a load workup that means just about any of the loads that you choose are going to be good shooters um, what's going to come down to consistency at distance is going to be your uh, extreme spread uh, your standard deviation you know your velocity numbers that's that's what's going to help you reach out there and be consistent if you're going to shoot you know past 200 yards i would say so 
um, but it didn't do too bad. So we'll move on to the uh, explaining all the velocities and stuff. All right, here's where we're at on the uh, data. So um, here was my uh, two shots at each charge weights. We jumped 0.2 grain increments, went to 27.3. I think we did come up with a little bit of uh, pressure on that one. We've got a burr right here. Uh, looks like from maybe the uh, ejector. Uh, primer's a little flat. So uh, here's the other one. Yeah, primer's flat on that one as well. Nice little shiny mark from the injector over here. So I would call that good. I was hoping to get a little bit faster. Uh, feet per second out of it but you know that's all right so the two charge weights that i would go with given the data that i have would be these two uh the extreme spread on the 27.6 or 26.9 was seven and the 27.3 was three feet per second spread uh so from what i would do from here would i just load two five shot groups up and shoot them both but uh, I'll probably just go with this one, just for the the speed of it. I may just go for that one, so I'm not ruining brass. I haven't made up my mind yet, because uh, I mean this one really doesn't have that bad of a burr on it. It's just a really small one, so uh, it just it doesn't look too terrible. So that's where we're at on this. Um, pretty quick and easy workup just to find where where a good load for it was and we found it fell right into a node here so uh, ideally you could load on both sides of this you know point one up point one down a uh, grain of powder and see if it changes but I mean you really can't complain about that I know it's only two shots but that's pretty close so that's gonna wrap it up for this um, I can, uh, I might update, do a little update video on it, just showing uh, a group size of whichever load I choose. That way uh, you guys know the outcome of it. So thanks for watching.